June 2007 Care for Cows registered in USA clinic makeover Gosmarinum HS outbreak in Vraja save Shambhu during their visit to Vrindavan during Kartika 2005, Kirtaraja Dasa and his wife Hari Puja Dasi were inspired by the selfless service at Care for Cows. Care for Cows registered in USA above are the directors of Care for Cows in Vrindavan, Inc. registered in Florida USA. Left to right, Mahavira Dasa, Ambarisa Dasa, Jamuna, the cow, Kirtaraja Dasa, and Hari Puja Dasi. Brian Devan residents cheer upon hearing that CFC is registered in USA. After finding an abandoned bull calf in a Brian Devan alleyway and getting the owner's permission to take him, Kirtaraja Dasa delivered him to the Care for Cows facility near the village of Sundrak. This act was the beginning of what would become Care for Cows in Vrindaban, Inc., an American nonprofit organization registered in the state of Florida. Upon returning to Florida, Kirtaraja, Hari Puja, and two of their best friends, Ambarisa Dasa and Mahavira Dasa got together and made a plan to work for the abandoned and injured cows, bulls, and calves of Vrindavan and the Vraja area. Thus, Care for Cows in Vrindaban, Inc. was born and work is going on to help raise the much-needed funds to continue and expand the service in Vrindavan. If you live in the United States and would like more information on how you can assist in this service that will bring pleasure to the Lord and pleasure to your heart, please contact Care for Cows in Vrindavan, Inc., P.O. Box 1445 Alachua, Florida, 32616 Email Kirtaraja1952 at yahoo.com above is the bull calf rescued by Kirtaraja who was given the same name. Mahavira Dasa during his visit to CFC India during February 2007. CFC clinic makeover wound care and skin treatment cupboard Dr. Lavanya prepares medicinal ointments in the lab new medicine cupboard CFC new lab and medicine supplies room 6 sick bay cow recovery ward Nilgai pen sick lab and medical room 6 slash surgery tree tree CFC clinic has undergone a makeover the last few months, constructing a permanent cow recovery ward, sick bay, and laboratory, all providing an excellent improvement for caring for the sick and injured abandoned cows in Vrindavan. A storeroom in the center of the building was revamped into the new laboratory and medical supplies room. The old door opening was bricked in and the window extended to become the new entrance from the cow recovery ward. Separate metal cupboards for medicines, wound care, surgical instruments, and laboratory equipment were custom made while the room was fitted with electricals and plumbing, plastered, tiled and painted. A new mini fridge was also donated for keeping medicines through the summer. As the lab is used for pathology and screening the room was designed to be as dustproof as possible. Adjoining the lab is the Nuluk Cow Recovery Ward, consisting of four spacious bamboo pens to house sick, injured and recuperating patients. The base of each pen is filled with one foot of glorious Yamuna sand, which benefits the cows by providing soft bedding to avoid pressure sores and allows them to rest comfortably, provides good footing for unsteady patients, excellent drainage so recumbent cows do not lie in a wet patch from urinating or wound bathing, and allows patients to be hosed down in the summer without moving them from their pen. Adequate ceiling fans, lighting, and two new windows are further additions to the ward. The sick bay had an overdue makeover too and is complete with Yamuna sand, wall fan, and lighting, dog-proof fencing, and an elevated tarp roof with a strong central beam for lifting large down cows in the cow sling. All the pens are in use. Access provided from the cow recovery ward This storeroom was revamped into the CFC laboratory cow recovery new cow recovery ward boasts more than twice the space before, the nil guys quickly outgrew their pen before, the only pen, running down the left side of the shed housed various patients and the nil guys recovery ward the nil guys and companion patients enjoy their new areas Laxmi enjoys a cool midsummer shower, Puddles easily drained through the Yamuna sand sick bay makeover the sick bay. Is fitted with an elevated overhead beam high enough to sling a large patient like Ryu before unfair Thursdays at Govard hand marks the Pasha Mela, or animal fair, where villagers bring cows, bulls, buffaloes, camels, goats, and other domestic animals for selling. Last Thursday when the fair closed in the evening a healthy cow and her calf were left sitting in the empty fairground. It was soon discovered why. The cow had a broken back leg, 
possibly from being carelessly offloaded from a truck, and as she was now worthless she was deserted by her owner. At risk of attack by dogs the cow and her six-week-old calf were taken in at Surabhai Goshala for a few days then transferred to CFC. Dr. Lavanya examined her leg and said the femur is fractured close to the femoral head and unfortunately is untreatable. For now she is resting, on shots to reduce swelling and pain, and the aim is in time to help her walk on three legs. Wish her luck. CFC carers offload the new patient carefully down a ramp of busa cushions into the sick bay resting her fractured right back leg mother and calf are transported from Surabhai Goshala at Radhakund to CFC in Vrindavan new admissions besides the cow with the broken femur and her calf, this month we took in two abandoned calves. The six month old bull calf was dumped in the area around the Gosadan one afternoon. We did not notice him but after we locked up for the night, he wandered outside the CFC facility calling out for his mother all night. In the morning we let him in and he went from cow to cow searching for his mother to no avail. Discouraged and disoriented he soon understood he was in a friendly environment and began to eat heartedly. He is friendly, healthy, and getting settled quickly. His name is Vishvanath. The 10-month-old female calf has apparently been on the street for some months as she was covered with ticks emaciated and her rear end and back legs covered with dry diarrhea. She is fearful of humans which is not uncommon as abandoned calves are regularly beaten by vegetable and fruit merchants in the streets. She wandered by our front gate during feeding time and begged to enter. She has been with us for a week and is slowly gaining confidence. It shouldn't be long before she gains weight and begins to manifest her natural affectionate and gentle nature. Both calves require sponsors. Vishvanath female calf Brindavan city is changing alarmingly fast. Plastic, steel, and asphalt have covered the pasturing grounds. Soon Vrindavan will be a place completely unsuitable for cows. Help us provide them a suitable place to be peaceful. Donate to the Care for Cows Land Fund. Life in the street Swimigo Smaranam meditating on the eightfold daily pastimes of cows as the Kali Alila this is the seventh in a series of eight photo essays illustrating the daily activities of cows. We hope this serves to endear them to you. After the wheat harvest all the fields around Belvin lie vacant and the cows are free to graze until the monsoon season. Every morning at 7.30 more than 300 cows and buffaloes gather in front of our second home and three or four cowherd men take them across the Yamuna River to eat the leftover grains in the fields. The cows happily swim across the Yamuna and after filling up, sit and ruminate along the banks and swim across again in the afternoon. When they get back to Belvin they return to their respective goshalas to enjoy their evening meal. This is a system that has been in place for several thousands of years and proves to be very satisfying for them as they get to walk several kilometers daily. Help save Shambo preparing Shambo's new home in the back of the Murugan Temple Shambo's new home is ready INTHENEWS Shambo, a six-year-old British Frisian Bullock, has been under the Welsh government gun for over a month, as support rallies to save the life of the sacred temple bull, residing at Scandivale Hindu Temple. Wales. Shambo tested positive to a routine bovine tuberculosis TB, skin test. Though the testing is not conclusive, a notice of intended slaughter from the National Assembly for Wales was issued May 3, 2007. Steps were taken to have Shambo isolated from other bovines and from contact with the public in a specially constructed shrine within the main temple. Scandivale authorities received written confirmation from their vet that Shambo was in excellent health and showing no clinical signs of TB. The chief veterinary officer for the Welsh Assembly, the head of the TB policy unit, and the head of public health all visited the facility and reviewed Shambo's welfare, his isolation, and the biosecurity procedures that had been implemented. They were satisfied there is no risk to animal or public health. Andrew Dismore MP for Hendon tabled a House of Commons motion which stated, This House expresses concern at the decision of DIFRA inspectors, that Shambo the bull, part of the herd kept at Scandivale Hindu temple and monastery, must be slaughtered, recognized this to be a matter of utmost importance to the Hindu community, with some 90,000 pilgrims visiting Scandivale from around the country who regard such slaughter as an act of desecration, 
and urges the government to use its discretion. Under Section 34 Animal Health Act 1981 to reprieve Shambo. It is well known that some cattle who have tested negative carry TB, and a vast number of those who test positive do not have TB, this is only discovered by a post-mortem. Scandavale authorities are requesting to have further diagnostic tests made and if confirmed positive for TB, are requesting permission to treat Shambo of the disease. Support for Shambo is on the increase, he has appeared on various news programs, has his own online blog and MooTube, and his petition has now sailed past 11,000, however the Welsh Assembly slaughter notice still stands. Show your support to help save Shambo by visiting www.scandavale.org Help save Shambo by signing the petition on www.scandavale.org Shambo, the famous temple bull HS outbreak HS, hemorrhagic septicemia, is a severe and frequently fatal disease of two types that affects bovines either in the intestine or the lungs. An epidemic swept across North India in May, and local Vrindavan newspapers reported heavy losses of cows and buffaloes in the mutter of Vrindavan area. CFC treated four cases from our herd, three cows with the intestine infection and a newborn calf with a lung infection. Those affected with the first type of intestine infection passed blood in their dung but were treated with a short course of antibiotics and didn't miss a meal. If untreated the disease can be fatal. The newborn calf, Vishaka, struck down with a lung infection was lucky to survive. She developed a sudden severe fever, hot and painful swelling around the throat, inability to swallow and by the second day had pneumonia. Her illness was caught early and treated as an emergency by Dr. Lavania and after five days of intensive care Vishaka was out of trouble. The rest of the CFC herd was vaccinated for HS during the month and enjoyed a get well party for Vishaka with a tractor load of long green grass and watermelons. Vishaka being treated with antibiotics, anti-inflammatories and drips for HS and pneumonia up and about, Vishaka nibbles some leaves at her get well party Vishaka is encouraged to recover by her mother abscess ointment abscesses are generally hard, hot, and slightly painful swellings that develop and enlarge slowly, are common throughout the year and form for any number of reasons. An excellent medicinal ointment was available for treatment but has vanished from the Indian market, so with Dr. Lavania's help, we made our own. Ingredients assembled iodine crystals added to potassium iodide powder crushed iodine crystals mixed with glycerin made at CFC clinic paraffin jelly forms the base mix all ingredients thoroughly together bottle and store in a cool place ingredients 20 grams iodine crystals 40 grams potassium iodide 170 ml glycerin 400 grams paraffin jelly mix the potassium iodide powder with iodine crystals and crush in a mixer or mortar pestle. Add the glycerin and stir. Empty the paraffin jelly into a bowl and gradually pour the glycerin mixture in, stirring thoroughly, until all the glycerin mixture has been added. Bottle in a jar and keep in a cool place. Directions for use when a skin abscess appears on the cow's face, neck, or other part of the body rub a small amount of abscess ointment into that area twice a day. Abscess ointment acts as a counter irritant for chronic inflammation and increases the blood supply to that area. As such the abscess will either reduce in size quickly and disappear, or quickly mature. Mature abscess capsules develop an obvious softer part and should be lanced at this point, drained and flushed daily. Packing with iodine tincture on gauze may be required. Continue to apply abscess ointment to the external swollen area around the opening until healed. The cows send their heartfelt thanks to those who assisted during May 2007 Alessandra Patrassi, Italy Alan Nikolaeva, USA Amazon Travels, India Amit Dulani, India Ananda Moritea, Guatemala Ananda Subramanian, USA Anastasia Tsitsishvili, USA Anon, Singapore BJ Parker, USA Cheryl Richardson, UK Daniel Lafleur, Denmark David Eller, USA David Kazanow, USA David Thornton, USA Devala Dasa, Canada Dhruva Maharaja Dasa, India Dina Sarana Dasa, USA Elizabeth Stewart, USA Hayavalabha Dasa, India J. Morokar, UK Kamalini Dasi, USA KD Ian Dasi, USA Kusham Seth, India Lila Shakti, UK Mahani Hai Swami, India Mariana Polonsky, 
USA Michael Bloomer, USA Michael Meshuris, USA Michael Tarlington, Australia Mr. DJ Hatchet, UK Nikhil Chug, India Nirmal Dasa, India Padma Samhaba, NZ Pranal Bharath, South Africa Pranama C. Dasi, Portugal Radha Jivan Dasa, India Radha Mohan Savak, India Radha Paddy Dasa, India Rahul Singh, India Rajeshwara Dwan Tom, USA Rohini Devi Dasi, India Sanjay Aurora, India Santosh Agraval, India Sonal Taylor, USA Stella Hersig, USA Swan NG, UK Tusta Krishna Dasa, USA Vananath Dasa, USA Vera Elizarova, USA Vicky Moreland, USA Vidyazagar Lockend, USA.